We're here at the Autonomous Meet and there's a whole host of vehicles here, a real eclectic mix. And we're here to see a EV converted Beetle, which is exceptional. Let's go and find it after a quick review of what's here today. to see this electric converted beetle in detail. We're here to check out the beetle just behind me, which is Callum's EV converted beetle. Let's have a chat with Callum and find out a bit more. This yes. is the second time we've done this. Yes. Because uh, uh, we went a bit wrong with the sound in my last visit. But we've, we've picked a beautiful day and, and an amazing array of cars around us as well. But yeah, what we're here today for is to find out more about what I see as being probably one of the best converted beetles in the UK. So. Take us through it, Callum. What's the spec? How long did it take you to build it? What's what's kind of been uh, the trials and tribulations with it? Uh, the spec is a net gain Hyper 9 motor. It's got five Tesla uh, Model S batteries in it, the long range version, so the high energy density ones. Yeah. So that's good for about 32 kilowatt hours and about 120, 130 miles of range, depending how you drive. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, I converted it twice, actually. I bought the car in 2019 specifically yeah. to convert it uh, and did it myself on a driveway over lockdown, um, <laughs> which was challenging in itself. But then having done it and driven it around a bit, a bit, I just thought, you know, this is so much fun. This is such a great car. Yeah. I'm just going to have to take it to the next level. OK. So I stripped everything out of it, repositioned a lot of the componentry inside to just make it to package it better, because I think that's one of the biggest challenges with this sort of stuff is how you package things. <laughs> And then, you know, that then led to a respray. So we stripped it and resprayed it. And yeah. that led to a retrim. So we retrimmed the inside of it. Yeah, the interior is absolutely yeah. stunning. And were there, are they Porsche seats in here? They are. They're from a 911 1984 Carrera, I believe. Wow. But when I got them, they were in terrible shape. And um, we found a guy in uh, Eansham, a guy called Chris Vining, who runs custom coach trimming yeah. to do it. So he's a hot rod guy. He's an amazing trimmer. And uh, yeah, so we've got some English saddle leather in there, which is beautiful. It smells amazing. It smells amazing. <laughs> it really yeah. does, yeah. Some Spirit of the Mons, Hound's Tooth Tartan in there. I thought, given the car is blue and we've got lots of orange cabling in there, we thought we'd go for the blue and the white. Yeah, yeah, the other, the, because you, the this wasn't always dark blue, was it? It was a sort of very kind of flat, um, pale bluish colour. I think it was originally called sapphire blue, which is quite dark, but it turned out it had been repainted in some kind of voxel colour, which I didn't realise until I tried to touch some of it up. Sapphire blur. Okay, um, yep. But so I worked with a friend of mine called Felix, who runs lighters up in um, Honeybourne, and he helped me get it stripped out, got it repainted, helped me with a lot of the mechanical side of it. Yeah. And I did the conversion bit. And it's just turned out beautifully. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, no, very, very clean and yeah. yeah, beautifully refurbished. So Chris, the guy who did it, he he built me a new rag top from scratch. Yeah. He did the hard lining, high, uh, headlining from scratch. Yeah. New carpet sets. He's done an amazing job. Wow. No, it looks really good. And um, let's have a look at the business end, which business is obviously end, yes. in right, the rear. Let's have a look at the business end. So um, what's the kind of range that you're getting out of this? Obviously, you've, you've come a fair distance today to uh, so the autonomous. So depending on how you drive it, you can get about 120, 130 miles out of it. So okay. it's not bad. In it's the sort bad. of uh, March to October sort of time? Yes, indeed. So we spend a lot of time in the back here. I think the, um, you know, the standard of conversions you're seeing these days from people like Moggy and... Yeah, silent classics and stuff like Electric that. Electric classic you know, car connections. So there. good. Yeah, no, absolutely. So I just thought, right, I've got to raise my game yeah. a bit. You know, so I managed to get some nice bits and pieces off him. So I got the, you know, the, the terminal covers off him. Yeah, and stuff, they look which great. Look really nice. Um, 
and uh, and yeah, I just thought you've, I've just got to hide all the wiring, make it look really clean and really pucker and stuff. Yeah. So now it's as minimalist as I can get it. And how many how many miles have you done in it since it's been converted? Oh, I've probably done about two thousand miles in it, I think. Okay. Um, and it's. Uh, it's a summer car. I don't drive it much in the winter. You know, now it's so beautiful and stuff. I don't like taking it out in the rain or whatever. So now it kind yeah. of it only really comes out when the weather's really nice. Well, it's very, very different to uh, John's EV conversion, um, which is another Beetle uh, EV that we've done. And check out the video up here uh, on the other Beetle that we've uh, uh, checked out before and haven't had a drive off. Yeah, they are very, very different cars. And I believe you guys are having a good old chin wag yes, about. Yes, that's And you, you said good. that you'd, uh, you'd uh, convert it in very different ways as well. We put components in different places. I think we've taken a slightly different design approach to it and stuff. Yeah. But you know, it's, that's one of the big, great things about this, isn't it? It's a DIY yeah. thing. You can do this stuff yourself. Um, well, that, that's the and thing. Take your own decisions, and it's just it's a whole load of fun. It's great. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's great to not only have your EV converter Beal here, John's EV converter Beal, but uh, Russ, who's over there, he's brought his Lotus Evora Tesla powered, and I'll put the video up there because there's a great video of where we looked around and had a drive it. So check that video. Out. It's really really good. So what, what's the plans for the car then, Callum? I mean, you, is it just enjoying it, taking it to shows? What, what's the plan? I mean, at this time every year, I say to myself, oh, I should sell it really, and then I can do another conversion because I enjoyed the process so much. And then yeah. I'm like, oh, I just can't bring myself to do it. Right. You know, the car's just so much fun. Every time you take it out, everybody loves it and stuff. Yeah. You get, there's a lot of love for Beatles out there. Everyone's got a story about one. You know, Absolutely. their mum's had one, their grandma's had one and stuff. I think also the market, I mean, the market for EVs because of the political hot potato ness of electric vehicles There's, i've seen some really good ev conversions go for for sort of cheap money yeah. so I, I mean i truly believe that i think there will be a, a potential increase of ev conversion prices at some point but who knows it's crystal ball time really it, but exactly in terms of inside stuff, yeah that'd be great insides again chris vining did a fantastic job in here oh, nice. so i'll get my stuff out of the way but um you know he's done a fantastic job with this and one of the reasons why I bought this particular model, the 1302, is because of the suspension struts in it, which gives you some space underneath. Yeah. So underneath here. Ah, special compartment. Special compartment. Especially for smuggling. Exactly. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can keep charge oh, wow, leads and stuff. Okay. I'm going to put a spare wheel, I think, in there probably eventually. When oh, that's I get a hell of a lot of space. So you've got loads of space, yeah. which is great. And uh, obviously it keeps everything sort of nice and tidy and cleaned away and, yeah. you know, the only maintenance I have to do is fill this up with water every now and again for screen wash. It's been, um, it's been brilliant. In terms of the uh, next car, if, if you were to sell it, what are you thinking? <laughs> are, you, are you thinking something more classic again? Are you enjoy the experience doing it yourself? What, what, what are you thinking on that? Well, I was just talking to John about this and stuff. I'd like to do something that's direct drive. This ah, has still okay. got the gearbox in it, which is great fun or whatever, but I think it'd be a different EV experience altogether. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I quite like the idea of an old Mercedes, to be honest. Ah, OK. You know, well, like an SL of, or something like that? No, I'm thinking sort of 80s, maybe um, maybe a beast like an SEC or something oh, like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Very I used cool. to have one, V8. It was a monster. <laughs> and it would just be brilliant as an EV. Yeah. Just the endless torque. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. No, so cool. that'd be great. But they're really big and heavy things and stuff. It's a and charging-wise, this is um, AC, uh, I take it, 7 kilowatt? Exactly that, yep. So I've got the charge port hidden there away in there, is. which is nice. It's very tight fit. It'll come to life. So Callum's just showing me the digital display and I'll zoom in, hopefully you can see it. So it's a uh, original display and it's got the digital fuel gauge there. So it's showing 59% and that's good news because that means you can get home. So this switch here puts it in reverse, does it? That one. Nice. On the screen, I can tell you you're in reverse. It tells you, ah, that's brilliant. Nuns feck reverse. Yes. <laughs> Further Ted. Ah, right. I fancy a cup of tea. What do you say to a cup? Feck off, cup! And um, you obviously mentioned the battery size, so remind me what's the kilowatt hour on the vehicle? I think it's 32 kilowatt okay. hour, so it's five of the 6.4 kilowatt module. Yeah, it's only like four hours to charge it on AC then from, from zero, and I'm guessing it never gets to zero, so. Yeah, it's not too painful. Yeah. Um, no, autumn. Well, thank you so yeah. much for bringing it, Callum. Not it's great. All. It's great to actually, um, you know, see it in the uh, in the metal again. And I'll put some videos of when we took it for a drive because I'm pretty sure I've still yes. got those videos. Okay. Has it got some pretty good pickup? 
It's got pretty good pickup. I mean, as I said, I mostly leave it in third. I never put it in first because it's just too powerful. I'm worried that the, the motor will strip off the two of the gearbox. Yeah, yeah. And occasionally is. I'll start it in second if I want to nip out of the junction really quickly. Yeah. Um, I've got the throttle mapped fairly softly at the moment, but it could be sharpened if we need it to be. I'm not too loud on the motorway. No, no, no. Really, it's just fine. I mean. You know, you notice the size of a Beetle versus the modern cars and stuff on the motorway, but other than that, it's completely fine, it's great. Uh, it's got regenerative braking, so I've kind of got it set up for one pedal driving at the moment that you can turn it off. But, um, and it's got a brake pressure transducer plugged into it, so actually the regen comes in harder the more you press on the brake pedal. Yeah. And I haven't had to upgrade the brakes at all. You know, the Hyper 9 motor in here is about twice the horsepower of the original engine, and obviously off from zero revs. Thanks once again, and thanks for bringing Not it down. That's all. Thanks a lot, Tim. Cheers, on, mate. Cheers. Bye. So it's been a really, really great meet today. There's been plenty of EV conversions, which is fantastic. Um, so obviously we had Russ's, John's and Callum's uh, conversions, which was great. Had a few Tesla's here as well. Clive brought his Model 3 Performance, which was looking amazing. Um, Michael brought his modified Tesla Model 3 Performance. I brought a different Tesla, soon to be coming on the channel. So uh, yeah keep an eye out for that hit the bell notification don't forget to like and subscribe because it's all about evs modified evs ev conversions trying to find the you know more fun electric side of uh you know transport essentially it has been such an eclectic mix of vehicles where there have been classics there's been supercars there's been retro i like this one here i mean wow all sorts of cool cars for me and um, not forgetting the max power crew as well so yeah this is why i think that autonomous meets are the best because it's just such an amazing mix and there's just no there's no aggro here you know bear in mind there's some negativity against evs there's negativity against certain cars but here everybody's welcome so big shout out to sham and the rest of the autonomous team for such a great event looking forward to the next one thanks for watching see you next time